Oi. You can jump higher. You can jump even higher. Actually, really touching from Kageyama. Hey, I miss these guys. Miss the rest of the team. I wonder how they're going to sync up with their separate experiences. I mean, Kageyama just crushed it, way exceeding my expectations. He knows. He understands. No one's asking Hinata? Hinata, how was your... How was the training camp that you crashed? Hinata standing slightly out of the group. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of it. You know, if we're gonna go big, break the rules, should have tried sneaking into that. Could have been an all youth ball boy. Only five days have passed, but it feels like so much has happened. Yeah, it's cool, we already... we've been through it. <laughs> That's actually pretty great. But yeah, Hanada's been getting it from every angle. Suki's been getting it from every angle about his height. Back to normal. Yeah, for real. I get it. Reunited, and it feels so good. All in all, I feel like it was a win. All that remains to be seen is how it works when they come back together. Obviously, Kakeyama got a lot of great practice, but I also... I feel like one of the, the best things for Hinata was... What would you call it? Like a humbling? Or just maybe a very heightened awareness of what he lacks and his actual position in viable hierarchy. But like I've said many times, I think Hinata's greatest strength, the thing that makes him worthy of being in the protagonist spot for the most part, is his outlook and his will. I have faith in him to respond to that really well. Episode 6, Enhancements. Positioning? Oh. Good idea. We haven't really seen much at all of the rest of the team, what they've been working on. I mean, we know nominally they've been working on serves. Has it paid off? That looked amazing. <laughs> oh, perfect. Can we all do jump serves now? Everyone except for Hinata? That looked... Whoa! Yeah, exactly. That's really encouraging. Damn! Nishinoya can't get it. He's ping-ponging it. For it is so crazy to think about what they're going into. Every team that they're facing has gone through what they've gone through, right? So it's just the level of competition is so much higher. And even that knowledge doesn't explain just how good any of the teams are because one team going to nationals could, could be 10 times better than another team going to nationals. All we know is that both of those hypothetical teams were better than their competition. It doesn't say anything about their, their levels in reference to each other. There's potentially some just super beasts out there that, who knows, you are right to be worried. I really want you to succeed, man. I really want you to succeed after everything. Oh no, <laughs> why now? The timing. I am just in, 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 the, in the zone? Is, is that what it is? What's going on? Oh, he's doing it. The tip tip step. What to make of that? What to make of that? It was amazing, but also he was out. Okay, sees. I'm gonna answer your question with the only language that matters. Volleyball. That was a lie. <laughs> that was a lie. Not sure that follow. The balls of your feet? Teach me something about jumping, Kagama. Not a chance. No way. Take a wild guess. Man, that is the that is the key right there. It feels like there's a huge difference between wanting something 
or loving something for its de desired effect or outcome or a specific aspect of it. Like let's say they just love playing games. It's a whole other thing to love the nuts and bolts of the process, the details, the hard work. Like you put someone who has that quality into something and they just cannot lose from a growth perspective. The things I'm best at, the areas of life where I, I think I have some kind of degree of skill or knowledge largely are the things that you cannot tear me away from. And other people who hear about things that I do or things or hobbies that I have, interests that I have, they are curious because what they want out of it, I feel, is the result of those things. But while that can be sufficient, it can be really powerful to get you to you know a certain level or a high level of skill. It's a totally different story where you love every facet of the thing. I mean, they're connected, right? Like if you really desire a certain outcome, you can wire your brains so that you connect the, the gritty work, the hard work you're doing with that outcome so that you begin to enjoy the work. I mean, that's probably how Hinata and Kagame ended, ended up there. They want to be great volleyball players and win. But the point is they got there. You know you've made it in something or you found a good niche when your procrastination itself or your leisure itself is the thing. Let's go now with Kageyama. Add one. To the not a ball face. <laughs> oh no! And add another one to the not a ball face column. That looked great. Yeah, he's lost some of that. I don't know the wildness, unrefinedness, and more focus. What's going on? Yeah, okay, get to the bottom of this. Okay, alright, here we go. This goody two shoes thing is so interesting and it plays off or builds on something we've been seeing since season one about Kageyama and his whole dilemma on the court. One thing that's been interesting to discuss about Kageyama is the, the interpretation of the flaw, quote unquote, he was depicted as having in his middle school days. One thing everyone seems to agree on is that there was something critical for him to learn in that, in that experience. The show handled that pretty well, and he's adapted quite nicely to be more of a team player. Where I think there's a little bit of disagreement, or where it's a lot more open to interpretation, is the extent to which those qualities were positive or negative at their base. The way it hit me, as I've argued in the past, is that they were actually a, a reflection of something good, like a power that could be harnessed really well. I think it would be kind of unsatisfying, and in a way also counter to the show's themes, for Kageyama to just totally settle into what his teammates are. Another question is how much is it a responsibility of the other players to catch up to what Kageyama can do? And how much is it just Kageyama's role to know where everyone is and just deliver it to them perfectly, even if he, you know, there were more optimal things he could be doing. He's been on multiple extremes and it looks like he's trying to find a point of compromise between maximizing his own ability, maximizing his own skill, and maybe by extension the, the other player's skill, and fitting into a role and being a team player and kind of matching where other people are. There's some part of that energy I actually really like in a very like competitive, driven way that he put the ball in the perfect place and just expected or demanded his teammates to, to catch up, which they couldn't. Something about that is more satisfying to me than just kind of looking at his teammates lack of ability. Maybe it's because where my priorities are in this assessment are thinking about the max potential and striving for the ultimate, the, the top. Isn't that the name of the season? To the top. And that's partly why I think my initial reaction, and still thinking about it now, why I'm, I am quicker to be critical of the teammates who gave up than Kageyama for maybe not being as realistic or as much of a team player as he could have been. Are we playing again? Ooh, what Sai is thinking. Sai is innovating. The non two principal characters. Struggling not to be left behind. Oh, Date Tech. Cool, cool. It's a rich world. We got a big community. <laughs> you interrupted his trademark. 
小金川がセッターの時の方が高いとこから打ってた気がするあはんあはん Flames of competition. For real though, there's a whole untapped thing here, whole untapped dynamic with Kageyama and Suki. Most of the paired focus has been him and Hinata. Him and Suki could be lethal. And steal them for yourself. And also that. Oh, what is this Smash Brothers screen? Okay, I'm not gonna remember any of that. <laughs> no, I appreciate the attempt at help on names. This is so great. I wish they did this for, for every matchup. There we go, that's more like it. These these screens are badass. I like how we're just fire for some reason. This is gonna be the big test. Coming together in a game. And I've probably been like aching to play for so long too. Alright, how do we steal this? How do we omnivore this? How do we scavenge their ability? Interesting timing given the fact that Kagayama is kind of questioning his play style, his play energy. Thank you for being here, <laughs> Sensei. <laughs> Thank you, I need you. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Bold of you to go right to the middle again. He's, oh, he's really good at adjusting last minute. Hi. We have a really bad historical record of practice games. That was almost a death. Go to your go to your MVP. Not that MVP. Tanaka. Damn, that attack really did level up. Kangam is going through something right now. Fresh off the youth camp. There's something especially defeating or terrible about getting stuffed, getting blocked. Not scoring is one thing, having points scored against you is another. Getting rejected, getting blocked, just crushes your soul. <laughs> he always impresses me, like, he just... He never melts down, he always rises to the challenge. Why did it look so cool? Whoa. Can't get anything through. How? They make they just look perfect right now. They look like some kind of iron wall. Foot, foot, foot. A rolling thunder! In a game! Hell yeah. Huh? Who's a goody two shoes now? Is that where this is going? It feels like that's where this is going. Kagama's is looking for that sweet spot. He's swinging between two extremes. He wants to win, man. He just wants to win. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't feel good to say that to Nishinoya, but growth is tough. It's gonna be uncomfortable one way or the other. You know, maybe if Kagama's personality was a little bit better established and he had a better bond and they they were more clear, although they might they might be clear on the fact that he he really does believe in them and regard them highly he could get away with a lot more sharpness he could get away with pushing them a little bit harder it goes horribly horribly wrong if there's any reading of ego or disdain or judgment that's a mess it's a challenge for kagama because he doesn't have the best people skills let's say but i get 
where it's coming from. And like, I also want to see Kagama be pushed to the farthest he can go. He's such an amazing mind and talent and energy. What happens when he gets to take all the limiters off? All that said, it's tricky because I also, you know, I still love these kids. I care less about the volleyball games than I care about them. Nishinoya is such a lovable goofball. I mean, a lot of them are. I don't want to see him be like embarrassed or punished for doing Rolling Thunder. But then again, you know, I get the other side too. This is war, volleyball war. And if we want to win, it's do what's necessary or get crushed. I think the saving grace is just that Nishinoya is a great kid. And I don't think he'll take this personally. I hope. <laughs>